Now I'm going to write yet another provocative statement on the board. So prepare yourself. That is that circular motion is not rotational motion. Circular motion is actually more related to course one on our two-dimensional translational kinematics. And let me try to show you then the more fundamental difference between circular motion and rotational motion. So until now, all objects have been treated as point masses. Even though we didn't always draw them that way, we really did treat them that way. When we did uh, one-dimensional kinematics, it had something here, a mass, say it was HAL, and it had some velocity, we kept up with its position, we drew it as a large object, we played with a large object, really mathematically, it was just a point. When we did collisions, when we had two objects crash into each other, we drew them as big objects, we uh, played with big objects in our demos, but really it was two point masses. There was really nothing about the size that was important. When we did uh, trajectories, right? so we had a mass like this and we set it off on a path and it would follow the path, there's no need to have a size. It was really just a point mass. Right? And then finally, when we did circular motion, we have a mass, it has some velocity, it's going around no need for it to have a shape or a size or an extent. Really, it was just a point mass m sitting at some radius going around in a circle at speed v. So we really had no reason to think of these things having an extended size. So let's look then at what does rotation really mean. Rotation really is when an extended object something with a size and a shape um, changes its orientation. Then suddenly you can't treat it as a point mass anymore. That's essentially what it means to not have a point mass, is you have a shape in different orientations, different directions on the object actually matter. So the example I have here for you is a square piece of wood from the demo closet which I have mounted onto a bearing, and it can now turn. So let's think about this in terms of sort of the old point mass idea in terms of rotation. So let's look at it in two cases. So say here we have an xy axis. Here we have the square block of wood. All right, so there's x, there's y. And in the old days of last class and the first week of this class, we treated it as a point mass, and you would put that point mass at basically its center of mass. If it's symmetric, you just put it in the middle. So all this interesting wood mass and structure is just a point mass in the middle. Okay, so let's see. So we treat it as all mass at the origin, the way I've drawn it here. Origin. Not much better. Now what if we turn it 45 degrees? So I'll do the same thing. I'll draw my x and my y, and now it looks kind of like this. I accidentally drew it a little smaller, but it looks kind of like that. We've turned it a little bit that way. Its center of mass, though, is still at the origin. So in terms of treating this thing like a point particle, it's the same. There's no difference between this and this. It's a particle, it's a point particle with mass m at the origin, it's a point particle with mass m at the origin. But, so here we would say it's the same, but different if you consider rotation. So this is really what this course, part two, course two is about. It's really about 
objects as they rotate. It's really not about uniform circular motion. That was just sort of a way to get started because I use similar mathematics, the math of describing an angle changing in time. 